friends that are running through families. is a day. 
dab of flour, a bit of oil, and a few sticks. There's no family or extended family to help. And you have to understand that widows had a particularly difficult time in those days. They had no way of producing income. So, so there, was, there was no family nor extended family to help this woman. There was no public assistance check coming in the mail. There was no armlet, homeless shelter downtown that she's able to take advantage of. No places of assistance that can help her situation. And she believes that all of her resources have been lost. And as terrible as that sounds, that's still not the worst of it. Number one, she is a widow. And, and that means that she had a husband, but her husband is gone. And, and she had a man in her life, but the man is dead. That, that then not only is she a widow, but she's a single parent. Somebody knows what it feels like when you, when, when you don't have enough resources as a single parent. Well, she's got a son. And if you read the passage, she's making her last meal for her son, for her and her son. And you know, her, her son is the object of her affection, that she's going to give most of the biscuit to him. Can you imagine what she tells her son? Son, this is going to be our last meal. Everything has finally crashed in. We're going to eat this, and that's all we're going to be able to do. We're just going to waste away, because everything else, all of our hope, is gone. So not only is she in trouble, but she's also under a curse. And she's under a curse in this passage for two reasons. She's under a curse because of where she lives. She lives uh, in Zarephath, and that's just a reason in, in, in the in, in area, the region of Sidon. And Prophet Elijah has pronounced judgment on this area because of the sinfulness of the king. Some of us are suffering not because of what we have done, uh, but because of what others have done. It could be because of where we live, or it could be because of disobedience of someone else. Uh, the woman is in trouble because she lives in a place that's not producing anything, in a place where the leadership is going bad and, and, and people are suffering under bad leadership. Elijah preached that neither do nor rain no water for vegetation, no water for drinking purposes is going to fall where she lives. So she's under a curse. But more importantly than where she lives, she's under a curse because of the God that she's chosen. She's chosen another God than Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because of where she lives, Baal and Asherah are the gods that she's serving. Some of us are cursed because of the gods we submit to. <laughs> We're cursed because we submit to the God of low self-esteem. That God will lead, that God will lead you to constantly berate yourself, to constantly devalue yourself, and make yourself behave consistently below your privilege, even though you're beloved and valuable to the true and living God who created you in his image. Or we serve a God of status. But that God will disappoint you because it will make you spend all the time and energy chasing after things and, and keep you hooked up, up with trifling, superficial people that, that have no substance to them. <laughs> or, or sometimes we keep submitting to the gods of feel good. Those gods will destroy us because they'll make us a slave to the next buzz, to the next high, to the next thrill. Or sometimes we serve the god of popularity. That god will destroy us by making us bow down other people's opinions and, and making us incapable of standing on our own two feet. We need to understand that the way we go depends on the God that is over our lives. If we choose the wrong God, we are in trouble. But there's only one somebody who's qualified to be your God. And that's the one who blew the breath into you, into your body. And that's the one who picks you up when you're falling down. There's only one somebody that can be your God. The God that you choose can determine how high you go. Anybody, anybody going through anything today? Do you, do you keep going in circles? Do you keep making resolutions and commitments to yourself that don't seem to come to pass? Do you keep making yourself the same promises and, and, and you still haven't gotten anywhere? Has it been years and you still find yourself at the same level uh, emotionally or spiritually? Are you still broke, busted, and disgusted? You might want to check and make sure that you've chosen the right God. 
You might give lip service to one God, but your actions determine who you really serve. Check which God you've chosen. So this woman is in a difficult place because she's under a curse. She's cursed because of where she lives. She's cursed because of the God she's chosen. And in verse 12, we see her perspective. She said, as the Lord, your, as the Lord God lives, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in the barrel, and a little oil in the cruise, and behold, I'm going to gather two sticks that I can go uh, dress it for me and my son. We're going to eat it and die. Perspective is the window or the lens through which you see your circumstances. And your perspective is determined not just by what you see, but how you look at it. And the way you determine how you're going to excel, whether you're going to excel, is not by the trouble that you're in, but by the way you look at your trouble. When she starts gathering sticks, it says her perspective is that her life is over. The widow sees one thing. But God sees something else. Not to see what God sees. Because when God sees, it's always better than what I see. God sees something different from what I see. I, I see surgery, but God sees a better body. I see my opinion being challenged, but God sees a learning opportunity for me. I may see a mistake, but God sees a lesson that I can learn from that mistake. I may see a broken heart, but God sees an opportunity for a healthier approach to relationships. I may see a sickness, but God sees a testimony of how God is able to heal and so that we can encourage others. I may see a burden, but God sees a chance to trust God more with your burden. Hallelujah. But when we can't see, we, when we can't see out of God's eyes, we, we lose our perspective. Lord, help me to see through your eyes. So the woman didn't have a healthy perspective, but she made a discovery that found and found treasure in the words of the prophet. The prophet doesn't accept the excuse of her circumstances. He doesn't say, I understand. He doesn't say, I know what you're going through. He doesn't even say, cry on my shoulder. But he says, bake me a little cake first. And when you finish taking care of baking this cake, Make one for yourself and your son. It almost seems as if he's being selfish and, and hard-hearted. No sympathy, no, no pity, no understanding of her circumstances. He doesn't engage her about what's really troubling her or talk at length about how she can solve her problem. He just says, bake me a cake first and watch the promise of the Lord. God gave her a promise through the prophet. I used to think that being wealthy uh, that, that meant that, that one had a whole lot of money. Used to think that being wealthy made, meant that you had a whole lot of money. Did you, did you know that you could have a whole lot of money and still be broke? <laughs> Wealth is not determined by currency. Wealth is determined by promise and perspective. She is wealthy. Her situation changes from frustration and helplessness to prosperity and wealth. But it changes not because she got an inheritance. It, it changes not because she gets more money, but she becomes wealthy because she has a promise. She is wealthy because she has a word from the Lord. She's not wealthy because Elijah opened up his checkbook and said, I need to give you some money. He doesn't give her a check from the welfare agency, but, but he gives her a promise, a word from God. If you do what God says, God will do this. If, if you have God's promise, you have a whole lot of wealth, more than what you could have in the land of God. See, when you read this passage, if you're not careful, you'll think that the meal barrel just kept running over. But that's not what it says. If you read it carefully, Amen. If, if you don't read it carefully, you'll think that the barrel was always filled to capacity. But that's not what happened. In fact, it got low and it stayed low. But the key is that whenever she went to it, there was always something there. Whenever she needed some oil, I don't care how much she used the day before, there was always 
understands that you might not have a lot of money, but somehow when you open up your refrigerator, something up in there. You might not have a big bank account, but somehow your kids are cold and clean every day. Just God just keeps replenishing your spiritual account over and over and over. God says to Elijah, and this is to her deliverance. I have comm I've commanded a widowed woman to take care of you, Elijah, and she's in Zarephath. And when I read this, if I'm not careful, I think the provision is just for Elijah. Uh -huh. But see, God says, I have commanded. And in the original language, it means I have spoken with authority. Uh -huh. He has not spoken to the woman. She's not heard his voice. But he, what, what, what he does is not sovereignly speak over the woman, but he speaks over, uh, not speak to the woman, I'm sorry, but he speaks over the woman. Amen. Amen. He says a word over her life, which means that if he's going to provide Elijah provision, then he's going to provide her provision. They, they, there have to be resources available if, they're, if he's going to provide for the prophet. So God speaks uh, to, to, to her situation so that she will have more than enough to provide for the prophet who God is sending her way. So, so God doesn't have to speak to her uh, specifically, but he speaks over her situation. Yeah. And as soon as he speaks over her situation, amen, then things in her life begin to line up with his word, which means nothing contrary will happen because God has spoken. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. She didn't even know it. She hadn't figured it out yet. She thinks it's all over. But guess what? The best is yet to come. And it's just beginning. Because God has spoken over her life. Well, now, you need to know that no matter how dark things look for you right now, you need to know that, that, that you're still here because God has spoken over your life. You might not have heard his voice directly. You might not be in a place where you can hear his voice because circumstances around you are speaking so loud. That's why God has to send the preacher or the church school teacher or the choir selection. The word, the word of God brought to you. Amen. The word says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And when God speaks over you, over your life, and if it, 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 it can just you can just grab a hold of that thing, of that word in obedience, then the enemy cannot break through and steal what God has said. The word knows how to cover you. Jesus became that fence around you. He became that hedge of protection around you. How do you know when God has spoken over you? You know if God has spoken over you when you find yourself in a storm. But God just keeps sending people your way. Hallelujah. You know God has spoken over you when you're almost at ease, but somehow you make it all the way home. You know God has spoken over you when, you ain't, when everything ain't going right in your family, but guess what? God still keeps on using you. Hallelujah. You know when he's spoken over you when you know your resources don't have much left to them, but he keeps on providing for your needs and then even has some of your wants. God gives you enough for yourself. God gives you enough to share. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, I, I believe that some of our foreparents understood this principle better than we do. Because very often, they had to deal with having very little but guess what? They still opened their front door and let neighbors come in. They let cousins come in. They let the family come in. If you trust God, you can share what you have and know that he's going to take care of you. You might not have a lot, but somehow you make it from week to week. That's how you know God has spoken over your life. You don't even have a job, but somehow there's food on your table. The enemies put broke and potholes and booby traps in your way, but you take a licking and keep on ticking. God has spoken over your life. Is anybody here who God has spoken over your life and you're glad to know that God knows your name and knows your situation? I've been through some rough times. I've been through some stuff, but I'm still 
it just keeps on giving. Just that. Know that 